In this video, I drive a Mitsubishi Colt. It's amazing, look at it, wow. Uh, let's put some lights on, on the slidey switch gear, because we are driving a 1979 Mitsubishi Colt 1400 GLX. Ah, there is Angel in his princess. We shall see him later on. It's quite a princess, I promise you. Look at the state of that. It's like he's driving around in the 1980s. But yeah, this, this is um, one of very few Mitsubishi 1400 GLXs left. And um, this is a real honor to get to drive this. Oh. So different in so many ways from what you expect of a super mini. You think 1979, that's the year before the Metro even existed. Well, it obviously existed if it wasn't yet on sale. Um, we got the Allegro, which wasn't really fitting the super mini glass because it didn't have a hatchback. Uh, Renault 5s with their longitudinal front wheel drive setup. This is something different again uh, because major thing here is I've got a four-speed gearbox but I haven't I've actually got an eight-speed gearbox because it's dual range at the moment it's in power mode which means the gearing is quite short and there's a little illuminated thing on the dashboard telling me that I am in power mode I don't know how you go about changing which mode you're in. I'm going to try doing it just as a regular gear change and we'll see what happens. Hope it doesn't go horribly wrong. Oh, there we go. So we're in third still, but that's a much taller third and we're now in economy mode. So um, yeah, utterly pointless, completely and utterly pointless and um, rendered entirely obsolete even within the lifestyle life cycle of this car by the invent or the invention rather of the five-speed gearbox sorry it's been a long day i've driven lots of exciting cars and um, i may resort to complete gobbledygook maybe i should go back to power mode so there you go that's me swapping between the modes it's um utterly bizarre. But Mitsubishi was not necessarily one to copy anyone else. Not, not that the Japanese really did that. They would take European and American designs as their baseline and then improve them with their own quirky features. And I don't think it gets a lot more quirky than um, an eight-speed gearbox. The noises are even fantastic. So much wine and character. Oh, this is just lovely. And so much tan or beige or... No, the dashboard's not beige, that's too dark. Yeah, I've got switches for the rear wiper down there and the heated rear window. I've got sliding switches for wipers and lights and a little thin stalk here for the indicator. This is truly lovely. So this is the outside of the Mitsubishi Colt. You see it's got the Japanese obsession with too many indicators. But it's a really neat hatchback design. And really one of the first Japanese cars to really nail the concept of the hatchback. Uh, incidentally, they were badged as Mitsubishis, but always sold as Colts in the UK because it was assumed that um, Brits wouldn't be able to pronounce Mitsubishi. Um, got the original rear wiper blade by the look of it, it's gone slightly silver. That should be black. And uh, my gimbal is starting to get worn out, I think. But obviously the best bit is the interior, which we shall go and consider now. I mean, just look at that. It's an absolute feast of brown and beige. 
which is brilliant in itself. But obviously the most interesting thing for many people is the dual range transmission. So there's your regular gear lever. It's got quite a long throw on it. And then you've got the power and economy as well. Um, it sounded a lot smoother when I was doing it driving along, but the, the brown theme continues to the fact even the radio is, is a, sort of brown. Lovely digital clock, nice clear heater controls, very typically Japanese. And then you've got these sliders for the wipers and for the lights over here as well. That's quite a neat feature. And um, to be honest, I love even the dash lights. I mean, it seems otherworldly. So we've got one to warn of brake level, I'm guessing. Um, and then you can see a, a power mode and economy in the middle. So that will change depending on where that lever is. Um, the indicators, absolutely beautiful. Um, I think I'm gonna have to try the wipers now. I wonder where the washers are. Oh, there they are, that's nice and logical. Oh, I'd say the wiper blades could possibly do with being replaced. There's, there's even a mist function. That's incredible for 1979. So yeah, very clear, we've got a rev counter. Um, that's probably it as far as mod cons, it's manual steering. Um, but here's the buttons for the heated rear window and the rear wiper, which I'm not gonna operate. Um, can adjust the brightness of the illumination. Uh, turn that off so we don't cook the coil. It's amazing. I'm absolutely blown away by this car. Uh, let's go and have a look under the bonnet and then I'm gonna have to go because we're meant to be eating chips. Right, we're taking a look in the boot apparently because I just pulled the wrong button. Uh, so gas struts there, simple little shelf, uh, a reasonable amount of space. Oh, this gimbal has lost the plot entirely. Come on. There we go. So that's your load space. Going to have a quick look under the bonnet. And there we go, transverse engine. Gearbox is on this side, on the driver's side, and that is your dual range gearbox. Um, presumably the dual range is the extra bit at the back. Bit of oil go leakage going on, but this car has just driven around the Isle of Mull. So we can be forgiven for that. Uh, let's just go and have a look at the other side. Oh, my gimbal is going utterly crazy. I do apologize. And there is the other side of the engine. So we've got the distributor, nice and clear, easy to access on the back of the engine. Alternator down here, again, everything's so easily accessible. Bloody lovely. And um, a, a self-locking bonnet stay there as well. I haven't done that, that's just locked itself. That's um, quite impressive. Oh, more impressive than this sodding gimbal anyway. Right, here we go then. Oh, that pedal warning is um, handbrake. R perhaps it's telling you to put your foot on the um, brake before releasing the handbrake. Well, I didn't because I'm rebellious. But I mean, just everything's wonderful. The, the look at the gauges, the switch gear. I'm the happiest boy alive right now. That still feels perky, even though it's in economy mode. It's what kind of highlights the ridiculousness of this gearbox. But it sounds so vintage. I mean, that almost sounds like a mini. It doesn't feel like a mini to drive though. I mean, the steering's beautifully light and direct, um, but it's not mini sharp. Um, feels a little more vague than that. But this is absolutely amazing. So needless to say, Mitsubishi did drop this eight speed gearbox idea. Um, it certainly got them plenty of attention, but the realities are you just leave it in economy mode. There aren't that many chances for you to need power mode. It's a bit like the Subaru Impreza's that have um, dual range gearboxes. The Estates had a dual range gearbox and the difference is minimal. It has 40,000 miles on the clock and I'm going to assume that's first time around. But you never know with Japanese cars because they do wear so well. 
so characterful, so lovely. Anyway, that is it for this road test of a 1979 Mitsubishi Colt. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have and um, don't forget to subscribe if you have, tell your friends and um, share on the old social medias and uh, I shall see you in a future video. I've just driven past the car park. Farewell!